this video we shall be looking at a pair of speakers which goes by the name of Maestro Tempo 2.0 which is also known as Microlab Solo 15 and in the process of this review we shall be talking about other speakers as well and how they stack up with this and compare etc etc but first I'll start off with a little bit of background information these speakers came to my stock about two years ago when we did an overview video of it as well and in various forums and stuff people were greatly skeptical about it and fairly so except those who bought these speakers they came and they were actually recommending it to others and it was felt that the room was divided and an independent review was needed well as the saying goes where's, where's my, my money? money you gotta see it to believe it so here's the review and near the end of this video is all the criticisms and the spicy bits <laughs> which I have to tell you now in order to get through the boring bits. First thing first, let's get the housekeeping out of the way. The weight of the entire system is about 12 kilograms and the dimension is 33 centimeters put side by side and the height is 32.5 centimeter approximately and the depth is 24 centimeters. The cabinets are constructed out of MDF which accounts for the weight and the power is advertised to be 80 watts RMS 40 plus 40 which is distributed 25 for the main driver and tweeter gets 15 each. Physical features, the front is piano black and the body is made of MDF as mentioned before and it's covered with black laminate. There is a power indicator and volume controller on the right side of the main unit. At the back of the main unit we have the binding post type terminals for the right to left connection. The terminal itself is made of brass, very decent. Then we have the two RCA type inputs and both work simultaneously. To the left of that we have the bass and treble knobs which I do have a bone to pick with later. Below that is the power switch and the power cable. Above all this hustle bustle we have the heatsink which gets warm but never hot enough to fry an egg and the air duct above that. Now because the bass port is at the back these speakers need to be about 4 to 6 inches off the wall for best result as I have seen. Okay it's testing time. This is where I happily get to say don't take my words for it. We shall go by the facts. Now. What you see here is some video that I took and the music was added during editing. The dancing flame is actually not any sort of test, it's just caused by the air moved by the woofer. Thought you'd find it entertaining while I talk. <laughs> the tests being performed is on a used pair, used by me and quite mercilessly I might add. Since it's not fallen apart, there are a few good things we can take. The speakers are worn in and the results are indicative of what the quality is like after a certain amount of time has passed. Well, let's face it, nothing remains new and shiny. Salute goes to that which lasts and goes the distance. Wait, that didn't sound right. So while the music is playing, my trusty old sonometer picks up about 105 decibels when placed in close proximity. And speaking in terms of close proximity, like on the desk next to your monitors, it is loud enough to blast some heavy sound waves on your face. Even for a mid-sized lounge room, it would be adequate. With regards to loudness, let's look at some outdoor performance as well with live recording. This distance from the camera is about 12 meters. Background noise about 50 to 55 decibels, including wind and traffic sounds. So it's demonstrated that even in a completely open environment there is decent amplitude at over 10 meters. Good enough for a courtyard or shop front perhaps. But if anyone is planning to do a concert with this, it's gonna get chased by an angry mob. So the quantity of sound has been shown, but let's talk about the quality of sound. In real life use it's often like this. Sounds from the environment, people talking, music being played in the background. Now I'm playing classical because we are about to talk about the mids. Here we have a simple application that throws out a particular frequency or a note. And using that we can measure the speaker's response to particular frequencies. Now here we have the lows, otherwise we call it lovingly the bass. Now interestingly enough, 
these speakers were able to generate 20 hertz. Um, a lot of us may not even be able to hear that. And what's even more interesting is that it gives us 102 decibel worth of 20 hertz. The official specification mentions it starts from 50 hertz. The fact that we are getting much below that is bonus and it does so quite healthily. I took a clip when it was doing 27 hertz. Let's take a look. Fascinating, isn't it? Well, as far as this line goes, it remains fairly flat near the halfway mark and then it starts to rise, which is not too unexpected as it becomes easier to generate the 100 hertz and so forth. Now that chart was for the base, moving forward into the midsection. In this chart, the readings were taken slightly differently. The reference was taken at 100 hertz at 100 decibels and with that settings, we just moved along the frequency and the different decibel count was noted. With relation to the response in loudness, from 100 hertz to 1000 hertz, the response is fairly flat, only going up by 2 to 2.5 decibels. However, if you notice from about 650 onwards, the trend is upwards, peaking at about 1500 hertz and near 2000 it comes down again. I'm not sure if Microlab actually did it purposefully or it's just the way it is, but this peak actually plays a big role in making the sound of the mids more pronounced and I'll show you why. Consider this chart. Starting from the vocals all the way down to string instruments, there are many many different types of instruments that has its fundamental frequencies right smack bang from 100 to 1500 hertz. So you see this peak has its purpose in making the guitar solos or vocals more pronounced. Now that we've spoken about the quality of the mids, let's quickly touch upon the quality of the bass and the treble and then we'll jump into the conclusions. With relation to the bass, we've already seen that it does 102 decibels at 20 hertz which is quite nice as it is, which shows the quantity. Now to show the quality, consider the following track. Now what I'm trying to demonstrate here is the kick pedals have a definite start and a definite finish. There is no boominess and the overall process of delivering each kick is very much under control, even when it is going like this. Okay, back to studio again and let's talk about the tweeter. Getting the treble to be loud is something even the cheaper speakers tend to manage quite well. However, when it comes to managing quality and crispness, that's a completely different banana. We've already heard these speakers blasting away near its peak in this video a few times already and the tweeter kept up with the party no matter how crazy it got. There is a bit of a story behind these tweeters too. Once upon a time, not so long ago, there was a company named Microlab and there were two guys. One was called Captain and the other one was called Scotty. And the first thing they ever did was to come up with a tweeter. And the captain was like, yes, Scotty, good work on making a good tweeter. Now let us put it in a speaker, shall we? Aye, aye, Captain. I got the plans right here. And they came up with Solo 1C. Let us make another speaker, bigger and better, more powerful. What about the tweeter, Captain? Why, of course, we can use the same Silk Dome tweeter. It is nice. And that's how Solo 2C was made. I love this tweeter. Let us make a lot of other speakers with it. And they were on a roll, putting the same tweeter on a lot of speakers, including the entire Solo series. What you thinking, Captain? I am designing this new speaker. It will be big, it will be bold, it will have not one, but two woofers. That sounds nice. Which tweeter this time, Captain? But of course, you guessed it. And we will call it Solo 7C. And that's the story behind the mighty Solo 7C with the same tweeter. True story. Beam me up, Scotty. Aye, aye Captain. And they lived happily ever after. Well, sort of. So let's start talking about the pros and cons of this speaker. Well, it goes without saying the sound quality, of course. For the past few minutes, all I've been trying to do is explain why the sound quality is sweet as honey. The build quality is definitely a good balance between price and what's on offer. The MDF constructed boxes are solid enough to be kicked around for two years and 
not complain not creak anything it's all still working and we've tested that now because there is danger of me kicking the speakers in i would have preferred metal mesh instead of fabric but that's okay for those who have very deep pocket they probably wouldn't care however for most mortals this is a key issue so why is the below 100 dollar price tag such a big deal well let's put things in perspective here's a gigaworks t40 from creative it has 16 plus 16 watts rms a decent set of speakers we used to stock it ourselves a while ago the current price in amazon is 109 dollars which i think is a little bit steep because of speakers like this for example genius sp hf 1800a a 50 watt rms speaker which when we reviewed earlier was very nicely built and more importantly it sounded very very nice well someone may argue that the creative t40 has very nice sound and i don't disagree it is a good speaker but not twice the price good now we've been merchant of both these speakers and the higher the price tag the more profit there is yes but uh, if the two speakers were kept side by side no one will pick the creative over the genius oh one more thing check this out here's the speaker here's the woofer Here's the tweeter. Uh, I'm not saying anything, right? So we can see that the bang for buck factor of this speaker will drive over that of other speakers like a monster truck. Now it's time to talk about the cons. Well, the first negative I'm going to talk about is the availability. Now I did find some stores that still have stock of the speakers below $100. Outside Australia, it seems like it's all over the place. Some sellers are asking over $200, which is insane really. Next negative is about the treble and bass knobs and the power switch. They left these right at the back. Whilst they could have placed it next to the volume controller on the side, that would have been nice. In the front, more desirable. These were meant to be desktop speakers, so at an arm's reach. I mean, it really is chronic with these guys. This is Solo 4C and the controls at the back. Solo 6C, the volume controller at the back. The Solo 7C, under $150 if you find it, you found the Ace. But guess where they place the volume controller? That's right. What is it with Microlab and getting people to reach to the back? It's not romantic. Take the hint from the others and put the knobs in the front where they belong, man. Which they actually have and place the controls on the side for the Solo 7C new and the Solo 6C new. But I do not know when they're going to hit the market. So my conclusion of these speakers are that it is a very decent set of speakers. I am totally satisfied with its use. And if you can get them for under $100, you've got a winner. 80 watts RMS is plenty for most desktop usage and the speaker will come in handy for many different purposes, including those on shoestring budget for content creation perhaps and need something to monitor the levels. You can get away with something like that. Or just perhaps you're looking for a good set of speakers for music or for movies. It's not surround sound but that does not mean that it won't be enjoyable there is plenty of clarity and power and its use will satisfy anyone if we take into account its quality its price and its sound thank you for watching this video i hope you've enjoyed it what you liked or disliked about this video please be sure to leave a note on the comment section below and also please subscribe in order to stay updated with our latest upcoming videos hope to see you next time bye for now